Hey, what's going on? Ryan Nolting here with another album review. And we are going to review the brand new solo piece of work by the great Rick Wakeman. And this is the Gallery of the Imagination. You can see that folks are looking into these pictures that are blank and they're supposed to imagine what's in there. His childhood piano teacher, Mrs. Sims, once said that a musician's instruments is the same thing as an artist to his paints. And that he's going to create a musical gallery here uh, and let your mind, you know, draw in some of the some of the paint paintings. Uh, this is an interesting record. This is, you know, obviously Rick Wakeman. To those who don't know, and if you're clicking on this video, you you probably do know. It's not to be confused with this masterpiece. Um, you know, Rick, right there playing keys and yes so it's not to be confused with close to the edge fragile it's not to be compared to this masterpiece either um as you can see but it is an interesting piece of work and we're going to talk about it uh so he has and i you know i love rick wakeman i've seen him three times the solomon 1991 on the union tour when yes got back together i saw him 10 years ago, I guess, at this point with Anderson, Rabin, and Wakeman. that he was phenomenal both times. And I saw him four or five years ago, I guess, on the Grumpy Old Men tour where he did a solo retrospective of his career. And, um, you know, um, he has Lee Pomeroy from the Anderson Rabin and Wakeman tour on bass here who in my book should be in yes or could be in yes uh, he's fantastic he has Dave Kalkihun on guitar Ash Sohn on drums and he has a vocalist Haley Sanderson on seven of the 12 tracks here she kind of has a Candace Knight from Blackmore's Night vocal style sometimes she sounds a little bit like Dion Warwick this is a uh, the gallery of the imagination Rick Wakeman in the English rock ensemble let's go through this track by track and talk about it it starts off with a song called hidden depths uh it's a it's a it's a nice opener synthy some piano opening then synths uh I wish the whole album was like this opener Love the drums, love the guitar, you know. And then we get into a vocal track with, again, Haley Sanderson. The Man in the Moon has an 80s feel. But for me, not really a good 80s feel. Um, it does kind of grow on you, um, but it's not rock and roll. N not that it has to be, by the way. And we're judging this album not by what he did with Yes, not what he did with the solo career. I'm trying to judge it just on its own merit, as I should. It's got a renaissance feel. And, and some of the rest of this record has more of a renaissance feel. Kind of that dreamy, like again, Blackmore's Night. Think of that with Richie Blackmore and his wife Candace, if you know of that. Um, I love the Moog solo at the 2 minute and 30 seconds art. Um, can I trust the master? I put with a question mark. I don't know. <laughs> The third song, A Mirage in the Clouds, another vocal song. It's a peaceful song, mellow. Um, Rick is brilliant on it, I put. I did say this is not for everyone. This record is not for everyone. And this is gonna, this album is going to get blown up on some channels, I think. Um, this is not for everyone. And, and to go in thinking that you're just going to get your mind blown in a prog rock world... Um, that's not going to happen, I don't think. The next song, though, is called The Creek. I put nothing earth-shattering, but it is a solo classical piano piece. It's a nice song. It's nice. Rick Wakeman is one of the greatest piano players of his generation, and if he lived 500 years ago, 
starting a career off. He could have been composing with Bach and, and, and Beethoven. I mean, I think that's how good he is. But it's just nice here. Nothing earth shattering. I do have it circled as one of the best songs along with the opening track, Hidden Depths. The next one, My Moonlight Dream, vocals again. More of that Blackmore's Night feel. Nice keys again. Pomeroy, the bass player again. Lee Pomeroy, awesome player. Good on here. It's a little safe though. He has this great band. Uh, only When I Cry is the next one. Slower than I want and I put weaker. It's just Only When I Cry. She explains, you know, what happens when she cries. I, I don't know. Um, Cuban Carnival, the next song, picks up the pace a little bit. Still feels safe to me. I wrote, he's underutilizing this great band. He has a great band behind him, and there's not a lot going on. Just a memory. It's a, it's a beautiful solo piano play, piece. It's nice, really nice. Um, and I did circle Just a Memory as one of the best tracks. I also circled The Dinner Party. It's a fun track. It's got a Latin feel. And they stretch out a little bit here. Um, this is a Sunday morning walk your dog in the beautiful spring day album. This is kind of a feel-good album. You know, again, I see Rick Wakeman's name out there on a release date. By the way, this came out a couple weeks ago. I'm a little behind schedule on some stuff. Um, you know, Rick Wakeman, we're expecting things. Uh, but but maybe we shouldn't at, 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 at these guys. These guys are doing what they want to do. And that's okay. The next one, A Day Spent on the Pier. It's got a Burt Bacharach-esque uh, feel to it. Even... Even Haley Sanderson kind of sounds like Dionne Warwick a little bit here. She's reflecting candy floss and ice cream. Uh, Sunday morning walk. Almost, uh, almost, almost great for what it is, I put. Um, more vocals. The Visitation. I put more vocals again. Whose album is this? Is this a Haley Sanderson album or is this a Rick Wakeman album? Because she's dominating on a lot of this, especially the last half of this record. The Visitation. There's a cool Moog solo in it. Then The Eyes of a Child is the last song. It's old-fashioned sounding. I, I don't really get it. Uh, I don't get that style of vocal that she's doing here. She's a beautiful singer. And this is a nice album. You, my, you know my, If you know my channel, you know my rating system. Five is a classic, Untouchable. Four is a great album. Three is a good album. Two, two is a bad album. It's not good. And one is just terrible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a three out of five stars. It's a good album for because because of what it is. You know, no, he's not promising that he's gonna put out. You know, you know the Six Wives of, of Henry the Eighth. He's not suggesting that this is going to be a prog rock journey. Rick Wakeman can do whatever he wants to do on that instrument, Moog, synth, whatever he wants to do. He chose to have a vocal album with nice soothing vocals um, and some light classical piano playing. It's not my favorite thing he's ever done. Um, I could see myself throwing it on again in a, in a setting, knowing what I'm getting myself into, in a very mellow setting. Um, but, you know, it's a three out of five. Subscribe to my channel. Check out uh, my other album reviews. Check out my concert reviews. Check out my ranking of albums. Check out, I should probably do a ranking of my favorite keyboard players, which he's going to be on. Peace out. Be good. Thank you.